الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورفعنا لك ذكرك وقال تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وقال تعالى قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المرء مع من أحب صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected ulama, huffaz, elders, brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. And the month of Rabi'ul Awwal is the month in which our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. It is a month in which many Muslims around the world Remember the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than any other time of the year. Now, some people, they might ask the question that we should be remembering the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all months, not only in Rabi'ul Awwal. And that is correct. The greatest muhsin the person who has benefited humankind the most is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The person who has benefited us as Muslims the most is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If it wasn't for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you and I would not know who is our Lord and who is our creator and who is our master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would not even know and recognize our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it wasn't for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would not know the purpose of life in this world. If it wasn't for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would not know how to conduct our life and to live our life correctly according to what our Creator wants us to live. There is no greater benefactor and greater muhsin to humankind and especially to the Muslim ummah than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in essence, in reality, should be in our lives at all times. At all times. But due to our weakness, sometimes we forget and we don't remember the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because of this, there are certain times that we remember, certain times that we don't remember. But especially in Rabi'ul Awwal, the month in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, at least there are many Muslims around the world that remember the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, how should we remember the Prophet ﷺ? What is the purpose of remembering the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? It should not be that we remember the Prophet ﷺ on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal or the 9th of Rabi'ul Awwal and that's it. It shouldn't be only for one day. There should be a purpose behind remembering the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. There are some people who hold programs during the month of Rabi'ul Awwal and there is nothing wrong with holding a program in remembrance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Rabi'ul Awwal or any other month of the year. Nothing wrong with this. Seerah program, Seerah conference, nothing wrong with this. As long as there is no bid'ah, as long as there is no extra expenditure in which we only call people for the lights and for the nare takbir and that's it. 
That shouldn't be the purpose. The purpose should be come and listen about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Come and learn about the life of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then the intention should be that we inculcate and we bring this life into our lives, and we bring the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam into our lives. That should be the intention. There are certain hukuk. There are certain rights of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which are upon us, each and every one of us. The first right of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that we believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We believe in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, aminu billahi wa rasooli. O you who believe, believe in Allah and believe in the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is one of the first haq, first rights that we owe to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A believer cannot become a believer without accepting and without believing that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the messenger and the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He was a prophet and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. But not only that he was a messenger, not only that he was a prophet, but he was the last and final prophet. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين. He was the seal of all prophets. And in a previous talk here, we mentioned about some people who believe that there is a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And according to all schools of thought, according to all Muslim scholars around the world, whether they have differences amongst themselves, whether they are Shia or whether they are Barelwi or whether they are Sunni, whether they are Salafi, whether they are Dewbandi, whether they are Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, any school of thought, according to all of them, anyone who believes that there is a prophet after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they are out of the fold of Islam, out of the fold of Islam. There is no prophet who is going to be born after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is the last and final prophet. And a khatamun nabiyyin, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I am the seal of prophethood." So the first haq and the first right that we owe the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The second right that we owe the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Ita'atul Rasul, Ita'atul Rasul, to obey the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to obey him in everything that he told us, we have to do. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he did not only come to bring the Quran to you and I. Yes, the Quran is the living miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Many many people today, even today, fourteen hundred years after the revelation of the Quran, they pick up the Quran for the first time and they read the Quran. The Quran is so powerful. The Quran is so meaningful. The Surah, the Quran is such a miraculous miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's such a miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it will stay until the day of judgment. There are people today who open the Quran, read the Quran, and just by reading the Quran they accept Islam. There was one, there's one professor who in New Zealand, he was in a university. He is a professor of strategic war studies or something like this and he was in a he was in a university connected to the military in New Zealand when 9/11 happened when 9/11 happened when 9/11 happened one of the commanders of the military in New Zealand phoned the professor and he said have you seen the news he said i have seen the news so he said look at the news he turned on the news and when he turned on the news He saw the second plane hitting the twin towers. He saw the second plane live hitting one of the towers. Whilst he's on the phone with the military commander, the military commander says to him that 
Do you know who has done this? He said, I don't know. He said, it's the, all these Muslims. These Muslims have done this. So he said, do you know why they have done it? He said, no, I don't know. He said, it's because of their book. He said, what book? He said, you haven't read their book? Their Quran is because of this that they have done this. After that conversation, he himself says in an interview, he says that I had never read the book of the Muslims. First thing I did, I went on to Amazon and I ordered a Quran. He ordered an English Quran and he started reading. He says, I read it once. I read it twice. I read it three times. I read it four times and it connected to me in such a way that after reading it four or five times, I accepted Islam. The interviewer asked him, did you meet any Muslims before this? He said, no. And sometimes we say, Alhamdulillah. Unfortunately, we sometimes have to say, it's a good job he didn't see a Muslim and he didn't meet a Muslim. Because a lot of new Muslims say this, that if I had met a Muslim before accepting Islam, maybe I would have put up, been put off from accepting Islam. Brothers and sisters, this statement of many new Muslims is something to be fearful of. Why is it that new Muslims say that if I had met a Muslim, then I might not have accepted Islam? Is this our character? Is this our character? Is this what the Quran taught? Is this what the Prophet sallallahu taught? As Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha used to say, that kana khuluquhu al-Quran. The character of the Prophet sallallahu was al-Quran. And today, you and I who claim to be the followers of the Quran, people are turning away from Islam because of our character. We should embed and imbue the character of the Quran into our lives so that other people see us and they say, I want to become a Muslim because this person I like. I like the way he behaves. I like the way he talks. I like the way he behaves. I like his character. Why? Because the character is based upon the teachings of Allah and the Prophet Wasallam. Quran is the greatest miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was sent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But besides the Quran, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa received wahi which is known as hadith, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And we have to follow the sunnah and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is ita'atul rasul, ita'atul rasul, to obey the Allah and to obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says so many times in the Quran, Allah wa Rasoola, Allah wa Rasoola. And sometimes people say, well, this is, Allah says, follow Allah, obey Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So whatever is in line with what Allah has mentioned in the Quran, we will follow. But if we find a hadith that is not in line, then we will not follow. This is, there's a new fitna which has, been around for some time, which is called inkare hadith, to reject the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu They call themselves Quranists, but they don't follow the Quran themselves. Allah says in the Quran, not only does He say, obey Allah and the Messenger, He also says, in some places He says, ati'u rasul, on its own. Obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So within our Islam, we have Quran as the primary source, but our secondary source is the Hadith and the Sunnah of the Prophet What he said, what he ordered, what he did, all becomes legislation for each and every one of us. The third haq and the third right of the Prophet is ittiba'ul rasul. One is believing in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One is ita'atul Rasul, to obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And number three, to follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In every way, whatever he did, Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حسنة. In the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best of character. In the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best way. Allah Subhanahu وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ We gave you the best character, the most azim character. The greatest character. 
Everything, every way that the Prophet ﷺ did or whatever he did, it should be followed. Because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we should follow. Who is our role model? Our role model is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Our role model is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And sometimes we we sometimes follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Sometimes we don't follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The companions were totally committed to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in every way, in every way. So ittiba'ur rasul, ittiba'ur rasul, is number three. And number four, muhabbatur rasul, to love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In our hearts, we have the love of our father, we have the love of our mother, we have the love of our children. And sometimes it is seen, sometimes it is not seen, but we always love them. Sometimes when our child does something wrong, we are angry with them, but we still love them. Where is our uh, example of showing the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? How are we going to follow and how are we going to show the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? When we love somebody, we follow them. When we love somebody, we remember them. That's how the love is shown. And this love is such that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has conditioned it. He's conditioned it in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ that if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you love Allah, then Allah says, Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O Prophet of Allah, that if you love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you. Allah has conditioned following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say that you love Allah until you follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how much did the companions love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I won't take long as time is going too quickly. There was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was resting at home. Whilst the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was resting at home, this companion, he came and sat down outside the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He sat down outside the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was very upset. Very concerned, very anxious. When the Prophet ﷺ came outside his house, the Prophet ﷺ saw this companion, his head in his face, and is looking very, very anxious and very concerned. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh my companion, what has happened to you? What's wrong with you? He said, Oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh my beloved, before I went home, we were sat together with you. And we were listening to you and I was so happy. I was so content. I went home and a thought came to my mind. <coughs> what thought came to your mind? A thought came to my mind that one day either I will die or you will die. One day either I will die or you will die. Once we leave this world, O Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will be in Maqam Mahmood in the highest place in Jannah. When I die, I will be nowhere near Maqam -e Mahmood. And the thought came to my mind that whenever I feel concern and whenever I feel your love, I come to the masjid and I come and see your face and I am able to see your face and I am content. But what will happen in Jannah when you are up there in Maqam -e Mahmood and we will be below? How will I be content and how will I be able to see you? Allahu Akbar. Look at the love that they had. They are thinking about Jannah and they are thinking, how am I going to see my beloved in Jannah? Prophet ﷺ was astonished by this question. He was perplexed. Prophet ﷺ remained silent. A little while later, Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ came with a verse of the Quran. And Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ said, that your companion asked the question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard it above the seven heavens and he has sent the answer. And what was the answer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses, مَن يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا 
whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will be ma'alladheen with those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored from the Anbiya, from the Prophets, from the Siddiqeen, from the Shuhada and from the Salihin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving a message to each and every one of us that if you obey Allah and if you obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't need to worry where you will be in the hereafter and in, in Jannah, you will be with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَن يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنْعَمَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَصُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا A Bedouin came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, and he asked a question which was only uh, fitting a Bedouin. He said, مَتَى السَّاعَةَ When is the Day of Judgment? When is the Day of Judgment? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't give him an answer that this is when the Day of Judgment in. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked a question back and he said, what have you prepared for the Day of Judgment? Each and every one of us, sometimes we think about the day of judgment. Have we even prepared for the day when our eyes close and our hearts stop and we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What have you prepared? So he replied, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have not prepared anything. I don't have much actions. But I love Allah and I love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Al-mar'u ma'a man ahabba, a person will be with whom he loves on the day of judgment. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala says that that was one of the most happiest days of our life because we knew that we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ittiba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ita'a of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the strong belief in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Wa nashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfirika wa natubu ilayka.